So today we'll be covering um, the contents you see on your screen. Um, we will do a quick recap uh, of how certain processes have changed uh, this year and what you need to know about voting this year. We'll review some information about voter registration, when you can vote in person. We'll go over specifics for Voters Choice Act counties. Um, we'll go ahead and understand why folks would want to vote in person this year how to vote in person, we'll talk about safety and security amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, we'll talk about your rights at the ballot box, and then before we close, we'll go over some resources and upcoming information and events for you all. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to Omer. Awesome. Thank you so much. Hey, everyone. Hope you all are doing well. My name is Omer Khan. Uh, today, we're going to talk about, uh, of course, voting in person, but I do just want to mention, of course, you can still vote by mail this election. Um, for voting by mail, that will start October 5th, and if you haven't received your ballot in the mail by October 12th, please, please make sure you contact your county elections office, and if you visit the, the tiny URL link that we have there for you, which we will also drop in our comments boxes for everyone watching on Facebook and Zoom, um, we'll put that in there and that'll allow you to go directly to the county elections uh, link from the um, Secretary of State's office and then you just click for your particular county. And we strongly recommend, we mentioned this on the last webinar, really recommend everyone focus on their local local county office because that gives you the most inf best information for you specifically. Now voting in person, you can still vote at your local polling place. Uh, that information should be listed on the back of the information guide that you receive, the voter information guide. And say you don't have it, say you might have misplaced it, that's you know quite common. Uh, you can always count, contact the elections office uh, at the same link I mentioned. They also have a phone number if you click there, and they can help you find your local location. Um, you can vote in person all the way up until 8 p.m. on election day, but we strongly encourage that everyone Votes a little earlier than that, if you can manage, because you know it always gets busier the last hour. Uh, I've been there. So I strongly recommend you go earlier if you can. Um, go during your lunch break if possible. And the other thing is certain counties, and we'll talk about this more later, certain counties will have the opportunity if, if they are a Voters' Choice Act county to vote earlier than election day. And we'll have a couple of our speakers go into that later. Now, voter eligibility. Um, there are some things that you need to be aware of, um, some restrictions. So in order to vote in California, you have to be a California resident. You also have to be a US citizen and you have to be at least 18 years of age uh, when you are registering to vote. Um, now, a couple of things to keep in mind. Say you recently moved to California, what does that mean for you? So if you spent at least six months out of the, if you spend at least six months out of the year in California, you are, um, someone that should be um, you know, voting as a California resident, or if you've lived here over nine months, that also means you can vote in the state of California. So just keep that in mind. And if we go to slide two, well, the second slide for me, thank you. Um, all right, so again, just remember that online voter registration, the deadline for that's gonna be October 19th, uh, mark that date, make sure you get it done before then, if you haven't already. Um, if you want to be able to mail in your vote, vote or make sure your name is on the voter roll at your local polling location, you must be registered correctly as a voter by the 19th. And what does that mean? That must that means your name and your address should be correct on the voter guide for you. Um, there is a couple of easy ways to figure that out. So can I have you go to the next slide? Um, the link we dropped earlier, the one we mentioned earlier to get to your county elections office, if you click there, um, you can go next slide. Oh, sorry, that went to the last one. If we can go further, sorry, further, further back, we can start at the very beginning. Don't worry. Keep going until there's two images. Oh, it's okay. It might have not made it to this one, but no worries. Um, I'll basically tell you. So if you were to go to the county elections link right there, actually, it's quite easy. For me, since I'm in San Diego, you scroll down to your particular county, you click on the hyperlink of the name of the county, and it brings up your own voting registrar page. 
And once you're there for San Diego, it'll say, I want to in the drop down. And then you can just hover over it and click, I want to check my registration. Simple as that. You click it and then you can type in the information they ask for. And then you can double check what your information is on. Um, now, let's stay, yeah, we'll stay on this slide here. Uh, and again, talking about voting in person on the day of the election. Um, I want to give you all a scenario. Say you haven't registered to vote and it's election day, right? What do you do? Are you, are you not able to vote? That's not necessarily the case, thankfully. So you still have the right to vote with the provisional ballot. Uh, it'll, that ballot, just so you know, will only be counted after the elections official has confirmed that you are a registered voter and that you didn't vote anywhere else in this election. So that's it for me. I'm going to now hand it over to the next speaker. Thank you. All right, thank you so much for sharing information about voting in person and remembering that we can still send in our ballots over the mail. So when can you vote in person? We want everyone to rem remember that just like always, polling places are going to be open on election day, November 3rd from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. As Omer shared though, you don't wanna wait till the last minute, it's gonna get really busy. So please, please make your vote plan. Know when you're going to vote, have a plan, be ready, and a little bit later in the presentation, you're going to hear about your rights to be able to take off some time from work and make sure you have a chance to actually go cast your ballot. So in order to know where to go, the location of your polling place is, is printed on the back of your county voter information guide that will be mailed to you. I have already received mine, so I hope you have received yours. If you are part of a Voter Choice Act county, as we'll talk about in a minute, you will not have a location defined for you since you can go to any vote center. But if you are not, you can look up your polling place at the website that's included here. We'll take a look at what that looks like in just a moment. The website is tiny.cc forward slash polling place. You can also text the word vote to go vote 468683, or you can call the number that's on your screen, 800-345-VOTE, and they will tell you where, which location your polling place is at. You can also contact your county directly. We'll show you what that looks like on the page uh, website that's included. Um, and we just want you to remember for folks who are living in Voters' Choice Act counties, they do have more options and you'll hear about that in just a moment. So if you can go to the next slide. So here is what it looks like to look up your polling place. If you go to the website that's here, tiny.cc forward slash polling place, it is a uh, find your polling place tool. You simply enter in your address and it will provide your location for your polling place. If you are in a Voter Choice Act County, it will not have that information for you because you can go to any vote center. Next slide. And then if you wanna look up where your county is, please visit this nice convenient website that's been created for you, tiny.cc elections office. In Fresno, where I live, I see the information for the county clerk's office here in downtown Fresno. You can give them a call, contact them, let them know you haven't received your uh, guide in the mail or your ballot or look up where your uh, vote centers are for this uh, specific county. In another county, you can find out your polling place. So these links will be dropped for you in the comments. Take, uh, keep an eye out for them. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to the next presenter to talk more about Voter Choice Act counties. Assalamu alaikum. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, my name is Amr Rashid and we're going to talk right now about Voter Choice Act counties. So that's really going to be only relevant to you if you're in one of the counties that is lit, highlighted here in blue um, on the map here. Um, so if you're registered to vote and living in one of those counties, then your county has, instead of a regular polling location that you would be assigned to, something known as vote centers. And they'll have multiple vote centers across the county, and you'll have access to any of those centers. More importantly, those centers will be open for you to drop off your ballots between October 31st and November 3rd. So you actually have a longer timeline to go in person and drop off your ballot to your vote center that's nearest you or nearest your work or wherever that may be. And you can actually find where all of those vote center locations are on the link that was shared previously on your county's website. If you go to the previous slide, you'll see you know, your county's website. You click there and they'll be able to identify where all the vote centers are for you. Um, and you also will be receiving in the mail a document which identifies those for you as well. 
Um, additionally, not only do you have access to any vote center in your county, but those vote centers are supposed to have increased language resources and language access for folks. And so you'll be given um, access to a greater number of hotlines and translators at vote centers to be able to ensure that regardless of um, language, you're able to still access your right to vote and participate. And lastly, these centers are also going to be equipped with new technology that's supposed to make voting more accessible for all individuals um, who have maybe in traditional polling places have found difficulty with accessibility issues to reach and turn in their ballots. And so the vote, Voters' Choice Act counties is really uh, an effort to try and increase overall accessibility for all voters. Um, and so if you're in one of those blue counties, um, you know, consider yourself lucky and take advantage of these additional resources uh, and flexibility that you have to be able to turn in that ballot, especially because we know that that last day on November 3rd is going to be so packed and so busy. You taking advantage of those extra early days that you could turn in your ballot could be really helpful, not only for yourself, but also to ensure that your vote is counted on time. Thank you. We'll go ahead and turn it over to the next presenter. So now everyone, just a friendly reminder. So as my colleagues have already emphasized, no matter how you choose to vote, please vote early. If you prefer a more hands-on style of voting, you can still vote in person. Voting in person allows you to ask questions directly to poll workers. Another benefit is if you make a mistake, then you can easily um, ask for another ballot. Uh, I myself am prone to mistakes, so this is a tempting option for me personally. And uh, just another reminder, so that if you wait until November 3rd, you might encounter some unnecessary difficulties. So make it easy on yourself and vote early, please. Voting in person is one of several options. So it's important just to do what suits you the best. Uh, now let's move on to the safety issues when it comes to in-person voting. Participating in our democratic general election is a moral imperative even in the midst of a global pandemic. We can, however, mitigate some of the safety concerns around voting by doing a couple of things. For starters, vote as early and as safe as possible. So one way we can do that, we can vote early in order to avoid the big crowds uh, that tend to gather towards November 3rd. Uh, we should also observe social distancing while at your uh, polling station. I personally would strongly recommend bringing your own personal PPE, but I believe that many polling stations will also have PPE, face masks uh, for people that don't bring their own. And also be sure to check out the link we've dropped in the chat box on how to find your county elections office, as many of my other co-presenters have already pointed out. So I believe that's HTTP uh, colon forward slash forward slash tiny dot CC, I'm sorry, tiny dot CC uh, forward slash polling place. Uh, and with that, I will pass it on to our next presenter. Great, thank you. So um, I just wanna go over some of the rights that you have when you go to vote in person. Um, as folks mentioned, there will be early voting opportunities. So VCA counties will be open starting the Saturday before election day and they'll remain open every day through election day. Um, and because of COVID, there are actually a lot of additional counties that are not VCA counties that will open the Saturday before election day and remain open through election day. So you have a lot of choices in terms of the timing of going to vote. If you do end up going on election day, um, the polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And if you accidentally end up being there at the very end of the day, if that's the only time that works for you, um, we understand that's fine. Um, sometimes people are busy, but as long as you're actually in the line by 8 p.m., you can vote. So if you end up in line at 8 p.m., don't worry. They're not going to close the polls on you. You're already there, and so you'll get to vote. Um, additionally, when thinking about timing, you do have the right to get um, up to two hours off of work if taking that time off is necessary for you to be able to vote. So if you only work a six hour shift on election day, they probably wouldn't say that it's necessary to get time off to go to the polls because they're open for so long. Um, but if it's necessary, then you do have that right to take some time off. And your employer um, 
can require that you give them advance notice that you plan to do this. So think through the timing of when you're going to vote, and if you need that time, let them know ahead of, ahead of the um, election day itself. Another right that folks have at the polls is a right to bring a helper or even two. Um, if the ballot seems confusing, which I think it seems confusing to all of us, <laughs> let's be honest, um, and you want to bring someone who can help help you navigate the ballot or um, help translate for you, you're allowed to bring a helper to the polls. You, you're entitled to bring up to two people. Um, a caveat is that you can't bring someone who represents your employer or your union, and that's just because they want to make sure there's no um, sort of subtle intimidation or um, anyone, they don't want anyone to be trying to push you to vote in a certain way. But a family or a friend, that's totally fine and you can bring them along. Next. Additionally, when you get there, um, you'll wait in line, then you'll check in. And when you give them your name, they should not ask for the poll worker should not ask for ID unless it's a very limited set of circumstances. So generally, you don't need to show ID. When you registered, you already gave all the important identification information. Um, most people, when they register, they provide the California driver's license number that they have, or the California ID number that they have, or a social security number. And if, or the, the end of their social. And if you've provided that, you should be fine. There are some folks who register to vote without providing that information. And for those folks, the first time they go to the polls, then they will be asked for ID because the state still needs to verify that that new registration is correct and that um, you are that person. But after that first time, or if you've already provided the full information, you shouldn't have to be asked to show ID when you show up to vote. Um, and then occasionally folks get to the front of the line, give their name, and there's some sort of confusion. The poll worker says, your name is not on our list, or we don't think you live here. Is this maybe you're at the wrong polling place? Um, so in those instances, you have multiple options. Do not be deterred from voting. So something we have in California is called same day voter registration. And that's where on election day, you can walk in and uh, sign up to vote for the very first time and then vote right then and there. Um, the election office will put your ballot in a special envelope. And then when they go process it back at the elections headquarters, they will double check to make sure that same day registration is valid and then they'll count your ballot. So if you're facing issues on the day of voting, you can just ask to re-register and you'll fill out your form and then they'll give you a ballot to process later once they've checked your form. Um, there's also a very similar process with something called a provisional ballot. Um, and so you could also use that process. Either would work for most situations where there's some confusion about the validity of your registration. And then we'd also recommend if, if you're having an interaction with a poll worker and you feel like something might not be right, there are quite a few vo voting rights hotlines that you can call into. And we can share out some of those resources at the end of this talk. Um, you can also go to um, my organization's voting rights webpage, where we have a number of flyers that lay out some of these key know your rights pieces, but they also include hotlines. So you can call for help on election day if you need to. That said, very few voters face these types of problems. Um, many millions of Californians vote quite successfully in person every election, but we just want you to be prepared in case anything comes up, you'll know exactly what to do and your vote will still be counted. And now I will pass it over to the next speaker. Assalamualaikum. Thank you so much, Julie. I really appreciate that really thorough, um, you know, overview of rights. Super important. We have dropped that link into um, the chat. So if you, um, you know, want to bookmark it, definitely go ahead and do that. Um, if you have any questions, now is the time. Definitely pop them in the chat so we can answer them before we close off. 
Um, I want to share a few resources that we do have for folks. Um, the first thing, and we don't have it on our slides, but if you haven't filled out your census yet, be sure to do that today. Um, the last day is the 30th, so we want to make sure everyone gets counted. Um, our current California response rate is somewhere around 66% or so, so we want to get that number up. Please, please fill out your census if you haven't already. Um, the other thing is we are, CARE California is working to uh, get out the vote. So if you have time, if you're interested in helping us with our efforts, please sign up to be an MVP, um, our Muslim voter powerhouse. Um, we will be doing text banking training on Sunday at noon. So please sign up today to make sure you can get on that training if you're interested in text banking. Um, the other thing is we have a amazing hub on the CARE California page for all things elections related, uh, things like voter registration, voter education webinars like this one, and our much anticipated voter guide will all be on this page. So please make sure to bookmark it um, and reference it whenever you can and need to. And you can also check out the Empower Change website for more voter resources. Um, and then we want you to stay in the know. We have some upcoming events coming up. Um, the CARE San Francisco Bay Area will be hosting a citizenship clinic tomorrow at 4 p.m. Be sure to register at the link and I think we'll be dropping it down in the chat as well. Um, please take advantage of the clinic. It's open to everyone in California. So we highly encourage you to do that. We'll have a webinar next week on Prop 15. We'll go over everything you need to know about it. Um, it's at the same time, 5.30 p.m. Um, and make sure you save these dates on your calendars. Your ballots are going to be mailed out on October 5th. So keep an eye out on your mail. Make sure you're registered to vote. Make sure your address is up to date because you can't get your ballot in the mail if your address is wrong, right? And we want you to make sure you check the upcoming events on your chapter's CARE website. Go to ca.care.com. Did I say that right? Yes, I did and check out the candidate forum. All right, um, do we have any questions coming in? Sorry, so I can't see the chat. No questions so far. All right. Yeah. One question we just got. Uh, this might be a question for Julia. Uh, we have Thraya asking, where is the source regarding a family or friend that can be helpers? Oh, I think um, maybe I was unclear. It's not that only family and friends can be helpers. Anyone who is not an employer or union representative can be a helper. We were just I was meant to provide an example that family and friends could be helpers, but a neighbor or even a stranger who seems friendly and who doesn't work for your employer could also be a helper. So my apologies if I misspoke on that. Um, I don't have the legal citation to the rule about employers on hand, but I can certainly look that up and follow up if you want a, a statutory site. Yeah. Yeah. 